Howdy, all of you delicious people. Do you ever fall down a flight of stairs and ultimately the first thing that pops into your mind is, man, that episode of Game of Thrones really got it really exciting. Ultimately setting up that you have... And then you're... <laughs> Anyways, let's go out of our way to talk about Friday the 13th, the numero one. So, when going into this movie, I'm starting to comb through, and I'm going to go in and talk about every Friday the 13th movie, right around Valentine's Day, while also eventually combing in, or, or kind of bringing in also some other kind of quasi-Valentine's Day movies that I deem to be Valentine's Day things, even though they're not really and truly Valentine's Day movies. Like Warm Bodies possibly is going to be a thing that I'm going to do. Valentine's uh, and so on and so forth. So reasonably the reason why I'm going into Friday the 13th because ultimately we have a holiday that is called February 14th on this here. Which is ultimately not going to land on Friday the 13th in any form of capacity. But ultimately I loathe Valentine's Day so why not play horror movies consistently during this time period so I can enjoy this holiday for the horror of which it provides. Uh, but justifiably, I love me some Black History Month, so uh, ultimately I hope that reasonably everybody is in, going to enjoy February for that portion of uh, a great thing that comes every year. Uh, so let's ultimately talk about Friday the 13th. So in a very cryptic-like sense, if people haven't heard or seen or maybe have just blindfolded and and put earphones on and ultimately have just been in a room where this movie has been playing somewhere. Ultimately, I'm going to break down how I felt about this movie in a very cryptic-like sense, maybe in a very uh, off-in-the-distance uh, portion of sense, but it'll still be there. Uh, so... Recently, how I felt about this movie, right away, I would say that this movie brings to the table uh, one of those movies where ultimately I would say kind of boring, but then there's Kevin Bacon and then it's kind of boring, but hey, there's more Kevin Bacon and then it's just kind of just let's get to the point already. Uh, there's only a Monopoly game going on within this movie that is any of much of real intrigue. But believe me, there is an ending that really is just kind of baffling and or goofy to me. And I will hopefully explain why in the spoilers. So going into this movie, I realized that originally this movie was actually supposed to be called Camp Blood or Camp Blued, as I would like to pronounce it, because I'm hilarious in that way. But anyways, so Friday the 13th was originally going to be called Camp Blood. And ultimately, there is also a show that is ultimately called Friday the 13th. Man, I guess they probably had to buy some rights or whatever to ultimately get that thing. Ultimately, to... Because uh, ultimately, when knowing full well, like, Ghostbusters had to buy the rights of the other Ghostbusters cartoon. And what an arm and a leg that that could have possibly been at some point in time. But... So anyways, going into this, this movie was originally going to be called Camp Blood. How they consistently siphoned in that word Camp Blood throughout this first movie. I was just kind of intrigued about it. But funny enough, every single time after that, they didn't use the word Camp Blood. Because I guess they were thinking that this movie was going to be called Camp Blood at some point. It seems that there is also a movie uh, that I think is believed to be called Camp Blood that ultimately has a franchise of things going on. But I think it's a fairly low budget film that ultimately just wanted to uh, kind of uh, steal the fact that ultimately this movie was going to be called Camp Blood at some point. So going into here, here is the goofy things of which that I uh, have now realized uh, after... Uh, watching this movie with the exclusion of, hey, there's more Kevin Bacon in this movie. But anyways, because <laughs> that's the only real star that's in this film, besides what is to be deemed a man that is eventually going to be wearing a hockey mask at some point, which ultimately, uh, if you know what this movie is, uh, people will be like, oh, what? And I'll be like, whoa. So 
going into this movie, I thought that it was goofy as F. <laughs> this movie doesn't really have a true, clear-cut origin story of its villain. You could ultimately say, oh no, there's a there's a backstory. It's there. It this is the most flimsiest backstory that I have ever heard about a villain or a horror 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 character in my life. They never retconned it, they never changed it. They never whatever, they made they never made it sound better, even though they freaking did a reboot or a remake of this thing. Still, they did not make a better clear-cut origin thing of this character that made me go, hmm, I understand this character now. I understand what's going on. That is the problem of which that we never get into here. That's where I immediately point to the fact that I'm like, why don't they have a, a prequel to Friday the 13th called Voorhees and actually go into the lead up of day one where we have Voorhees, uh, Jason and or otherwise, going to be at this camp. I have been waiting for that for minutes now after especially seeing this movie, but any number of also friday the 13th movies that i've seen ultimately i thoroughly enjoy uh uh especially the friday the blah, 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 blah. friday the 13th number five through i think uh jason takes manhattan and maybe there's some commingling stuff in there uh ultimately i even like jason x which is a very goofy film but anyways I can't wait to take the journey to Jarvis, which ultimately is called or meant to mean Tommy Jarvis. I can't wait to get to Friday the 13th, the five, the numeral five one. So if anything, when going into this movie, if man, I like, I think this one is probably worth me just watching this movie and commentating over it because it would be freaking hilarious because when watching this one uh this time around i actually didn't get scared by the ending and again i will go over that in spoilers where ultimately we have a girl that's ultimately on the boat she's like hmm i'm just on a boat and nothing's gonna happen hopefully but why is this music ending at some point it's very unconveniently ending at some weird point and wah! yeah uh i remember i hadn't seen this movie in such a long time and the tail ending of that movie freaking got me and i'm like god every single time that that part is going to get me and it's such a bull crap thing to pull because you just have this long winded like stretch of like well when is he gonna come out kind of thing when is it gonna happen kind of thing and you're waiting you're lurking in the shadows waiting it for to come and you're just like is it gonna be now is it when you're ex unexpectedly thinking that the music is not going to end at some point but it will and then that's when it'll come but anyways this movie to me ultimately like really stretches a lot it really just goes into their being like hey yeah we have a camp and we're doing jack crap nothing and ultimately a lot of people are just kind of like looking like kind of idiots at some point uh like kind of showcasing how dumb they are uh because ultimately we have a town of people that are ultimately going and telling any uh person that is to come by just like don't go to Camp Blood. Ooh, you're gonna die there, you stupid kids. <laughs> like, if anything, this kind of reminds me of a werewolf movie, where ultimately you have somebody, like, hearing some sound or a howl or something like that, and everybody stops dead in their tracks, and you just have the one ignorant person that comes into the bar that's otherwise, Hey, man, what's that howling? What's that howling noise? And everybody's like, shut up. <laughs> that's all they say they sh they say shut up they don't go into 
Well, that, of course, the curse of the wolf. We ought to have uh, been plagued by this wolf for numerous years and blah, blah, blah. Let me read off this paper of words of story as such to delay you and, and to just have this movie run longer than it should. So, we have a bunch of hillbilly hick people that are ultimately going to consistently tell this girl... Uh, within this movie how dumb she is and we have a tour of this girl in response ultimately is just like no I think you're the one that's dumb so it's like it's this back and forth like no you're dumb no you're dumb kind of thing and I thought that that was stupid uh, we ultimately find that uh, I believe Jason's weakness is curtains oh my god if you were to put if you were to shut the curtains in a window, you will be safe. You will be viciously, deliciously safe from Jason. I guarantee you that. And ultimately, we have it to our reasonably. All you also have to do is never, ever, in a camp-like environment, get yourself into a bedroom business situation because ultimately, the one time that you're like, you know what, I think I think I'm in the mood for some loving. You need to do it at a camp where there seems to absolutely be no one there but just counselors. And reasonably, like we have it to where people are just putting this camp together. Why is it that it seems that there is never actually people? Like, kids, for most of the point, that actually come to this camp. It's always camp counselors or counselors of sorts getting the camp together. Why is it that we've never seen this camp actually with children, with the exclusion of one of the Tommy Jarvis films, which is one of the... I think it's like the... Uh, it's not the fifth one. It's probably the sixth one. Uh, or the seventh. I don't know. My life becomes a blur. Uh, it's whatever the Tommy Jarvis's one where ultimately it's the one with the graveyard. You'll know what I mean when ultimately I'll talk about it eventually. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, again, but Jason has a weakness. It's curtains. It's vicious. So, we ultimately find the fact that whoever this murderous person is eventually gets tired at some point. You can kind of tell but. By the tail end of this murderous person that they are eventually going to get tired at some point because man you like you just see this girl kind of just running around and all these things are just popping out of these places to be all setups and recently i'm just kind of going through this and seeing all these like why did this person have to move these bodies why did they have to be shifted so many places and so on and so forth and why is it that ultimately a person who cannot swim or has difficulty swimming is in the middle of water nowhere? He's in the water of nowhere, the middle of water of nowhere. And he's just like, hey, I can't swim. <laughs> God, that is the biggest problem for me. That is the hugest, biggest, fattest problem. And so at the end of the day, that is my biggest complaint about this film, is we just have, I can't swim in the middle of water. And I'm like, why isn't, why isn't this person close to near to buy land? Why is it that you just see him in the middle of the deep blue sea and he's like, I can't swim, I swim. Like, how is it that the cameraman was able to not go and say, you know what, I should probably help this boy out, but instead I'll just let him drown. F him. Like, I'm the cameraman. I'm on a boat watching this kid just flail around. So the reason why Jason is the way he was is because a douchebag cameraman was just like, I gotta film this and not helping a kid try to swim. That mother... F or, you know what? That is the reason why um, the movie ends the way it does. Really, it does. So anyways, let's go on 
to ultimately crack down and finally, after 15 minutes of just yammering about about this movie, I, without a doubt, need to go into spoilers about this film because it is about that time. It's not morphing time because I don't know why Jason, Jason from Power Rangers, Jason, Jason Voorhees, and so on and so forth. So, spoiler time, spoiler time. It's probably about that time that normally you would go into me saying, it's spoiler time. Whew! So... Friday the 13th. So we have it be within this movie that in the opening scene, we have two seemingly uh, camp who could quite possibly be counselors uh, with their yellow outfits uh, singing Kumbaya. And then there's ultimately two people that are like snickering like, hey, let's get away from all this. So we have two people that walk off to ultimately seemingly get into a uh, let's just say a sensual act of sorts. There's no candles lit, there's no rose petals anywhere, but close enough. And so ultimately we have it to where seemingly the girl is ultimately undoing her top, and we ultimately see a person that is via a cameraman, and uh, ultimately realizing that the cameraman had led to the death of Jason, not anybody else! I'm blaming the cameraman. Um, so we have cameraman that rolls in <sighs> his way through. <laughs> and we have it to roll to me. The, the camp counselors are just like, well, hey, hey there. Yeah, we weren't doing anything. Hopefully you're not going to kill me after realizing that we might have been doing or not doing something. Secretly, privately, whispering sweet nothings to one another. And so ultimately we find that these people are to have been killed. And what you know it, that just sucks. So we ultimately lead into me trying to figure out like how exactly does this actually make this to be legitimately camp blood? Like, if ultimately if I were to see Jason just like really just, like, just horrifically murdering and chopping up every single person and so on and so forth, like, zoroing away, like, writing Zs through people, or I guess in this point it would be Vs, because ultimately Voorhees. So, like, you would have thought that the carnage at this, at this camp would have been horrific, but it's not. Uh, but anyways, so... We have it, we're part two of Camp Crystal Lake because these guys need to make a buck out of this camp. It's not like they're going to close it down. They're like, no, we need to keep the spirit of Camp Blood viciously alive because that's what we need to do. We can't close this mother down. So <laughs> we have it to where ultimately... These people evidently had bought this camp and are trying to restore it. And while restoring it, we have it to where ultimately, we have it to where counselors are making their way into this camp that ultimately will never seemingly have a student in it seemingly ever in their lives. So we ultimately have a girl that is ultimately seemingly hitchhiking her way to get to this camp. And ultimately we have a girl that's ultimately just like, yeah, um, could you tell me where Camp Crystal Lake is? And the people are just like, you mean Camp Blood? And she's ultimately like, yeah, I mean Camp Blood. Because <laughs> evidently that's what you call it. So we have a troll to me. She gets a ride from a person. And so this entire time we have this guy that's ultimately telling her like, you need to quit. You can't go to this camp. You're going to die. Everyone dies at this camp. Like, things are going to go horribly wrong for you. And ultimately, we have it to where the girl is retorted. is like, well, I don't believe in, like, ghosts and, and spirits and, and vengeance and stuff along that nature. I think you're the one that's dumb. And it's like this back and forth, like, oh, well, you're stupid. Well, you're stupid. Oh, you think you know better because you think that you know a thing or two because you're younger than me and blah, blah, blah. All this 
garbage and all this rigmarole of just... We have also some town drunk that ultimately is going into the camp at some point to ultimately tell people, you're going to die. I'm going to poke my finger at you and tell you you're going to die. Like he has to go and tell everyone that is eventually going to this camp that they're going to die at some point. And so ultimately that's what happens. So we have it where ultimately we have the sheriff that eventually makes his way down to this camp to ultimately talk to the people asking whether they found this town drunk or not. And we ultimately seemingly have one guy who's having a little bit too much fun. Uh, ultimately a guy who shoots an arrow uh, right after a girl moves out of this, uh, this archery uh, target. Ultimately we have it to where this guy eventually puts on a Indian uh, Indian hat of sorts and kind of just uh, kind of uh, shouts out about and craziness and so we ultimately have the sheriff who ultimately is uh, coming in and making fun of uh, this guy calling him Tonto and all kinds of stupid silly Indian names just because he's wearing an Indian headdress and ultimately we have it to where the sheriff is like ultimately trying to be the stickler of like oh well like Ultimately, since you guys are young kids, ultimately, I got to, like, put you in your place kind of thing. And I didn't like that at all. It's like, dude, you are asking them for information, but you're basically putting them in their places and telling them that they're all dumb. But you need information from them. And so why would they tell you any god dang thing? Because when looking at it. Like, you're treating them like garbage or treating any number one of their friends like garbage. So why should they tell you anything? Why? Why, I ask. So anyways, moving on. So we ultimately have one of the, or two of the head counselors ultimately going and, like, having a night on the town. Because ultimately, why be worried about a camp that ultimately kills people? Eh, whatever. Whatever. So we have these two counselors that end up going out in the town, going for a diner and all kinds of other things because they need to. And so we have a two of the young kids, ultimately one of them being, again, a, uh, a dashingly handsome man by the name of the Kevin Bacon. And so ultimately we have it to where reasonably these characters eventually go and uh, they go out and they enjoy the water uh which ultimately leads to one of the characters ultimately playing like he is drowning into the water trolls me we have a tour their friends is like hey why is he having us why is he struggling swimming i don't know maybe because he's dumb i don't know let's figure that out so we ultimately have a tour everybody is now uh having a, a flash of baywatch in their lives and so we have it to where everybody, like, they're getting a boat to this guy, they're giving him a life preserver, and they're all trying to get to this, uh, this guy that is otherwise playing dumb into the water. Uh, basically, this guy can swim, but all of a sudden, absurdly, now he can't swim. To ultimately showcase that, hey, this is what happened to Jason. He bizarrely just couldn't swim. And ultimately, when looking at it, I'm like, yeah, here's the thing. We keep showing Jason seemingly way out into the water, and he is struggling to swim. And I'm like, how did he get that far out? I am so baffled and or confused by this, because whenever they keep showcasing Jason drowning in a flashback, I'm like, one, how did he get out that far? Like, what, did they, like, were they having, like, uh, did they just drop this kid off of a boat and just ultimately like the boat was like a motorized thing that ultimately was like and goes off and you don't see the motorized boat? So many questions that I have about this. And also, like, if they know full well that the kid was horrible at swimming, like, why didn't he go out with a friend? Was he just absurdly, like, the only person that was going to go swimming that day? Everybody else is like, no, I'm not going to go swimming in the same water that is shared by that Voorhees kid. No. So, anyways, going into here. So, 
we ultimately have it to where reasonably they go and rescue this guy and otherwise they kind of showcase the story of the Voorhees how basically this kid drowned and that's the legend of the kid that ultimately he had drowned and so on and so forth so pushing on so ultimately we have it to where reasonably people are ultimately easily and quickly getting bored because reasonably they have nothing better to do with a camp that they actually have to restore to its former glory. Uh, but reasonably we have it to where all they can do is just play Monopoly. And so I'm like, so wait a minute. So these people are probably getting paid for this to play a board game because they have nothing better to do. Okay, sure. All right. So we have it to where... Since the counselor's away, the the mice will play, and we have it to where they end up playing, uh, they end up playing Monopoly, and it's not normal Monopoly, it's strip Monopoly, and so ultimately, and I guess I should uh, scroll up the IMDb on this uh, for this movie. Uh, so We ultimately have it to where, within this movie, that they are ultimately playing, of course, Strip Monopoly. And we have it seemingly where there is one girl that is ultimately just in uh, her lingerie. We ultimately have uh, seemingly uh, the main girl that is ultimately fully dressed. And we also have it to where uh, there is a guy that just has pants on and that's about it. Uh, it seems that eventually the uh, the camp area is just pouring down rain. Pouring out like it's nobody's business. Like, it could kill a man with how much it's pouring down rain. Viciously. So, we have a tour where one girl is ultimately noticing, like, Oh, hey, I left my windows open in my place. So, I'm going to have to just leave. All while we had Kevin Bacon and his girlfriend ultimately needing to leave and not do the game before all this uh, because they needed some alone time. They needed some alone time to ultimately just be uh, just be humping it out. And we ultimately have it to a reasonably after this home session with Kevin Bacon and this lady, we ultimately have it to where the girl ultimately leaves to go to the bathrooms and and we have it to where Kevin Bacon ultimately gets a seemingly arrow through the throat for his troubles. And so, or what I would assume could be an arrow, I could be wrong about that, but that's what it looked like. So, we ultimately have said girl who is ultimately going in and just like, yeah, like, she's ultimately doing some bizarre scene from some old movie. And then eventually she's trying to see if the sink is ultimately working, and it's not. So ultimately she has to figure out how to make it work, and then she does. To her eventually she goes off to, because she heard a little noise. Because every horror movie, when you hear a little noise, everybody has to go and search it out. Like, what is it? What could quite possibly be that noise? Could it have been Kevin Bacon, uh, who is ultimately Jack? Could it ultimately be any number of people? Could it be Brenda? Could it be Bill? Could it be Marcy? Could it be Alice? Could it be Miss Voorhees that ultimately might be in this movie somehow, maybe? Uh, could it be Jason Voorhees? Could it be the butler? Could it be the mailman? Anyways, so this girl goes and is like, you know what? I really need to search this whole thing out. What is going on with this place? And so she gets an axe in her head for her troubles. So... Moving on, so we ultimately have it to where there are now two people's dead, and there is going to be more eventually. And so we end up having the Monopoly game ultimately uh, being uh, called for a count of rain. And I'm like, man, and just when it was almost getting to the point of me looking at this movie and say, yeah, the only good thing in this movie is ultimately Kevin Bacon and ultimately Monopoly. And so we have to where this girl, ultimately still with just lingerie on, is walking out to uh, ultimately get a change of clothes at some point. Uh, but then eventually she is going to go to the same bathroom that another girl was in 
to eventually get killed upon herself. So, we have it to where ultimately, like, people are just starting to get killed, and it's redonkulous. We eventually have it to where reasonably that the, uh, that the counselors end up coming back. I believe one of the counselors name is Steve to come back and ultimately he uh, receives some car trouble. Trolls me. He ends up getting a ride from uh, some guy. And so we ultimately have it to while Steve ultimately makes his way back to camp. He ultimately gets stabbed for his trouble. Man, these people are just going to get stabbed and killed and all kinds of stuff. So, we eventually make our way to ultimately notice that there is, uh, that there is a guy that ultimately, uh, is wearing, like, a football jersey. I believe his name is Ned. And funny enough, like, this guy has been gone for a severely long time. Uh, we ultimately have a tour. Seemingly, um, this guy ends up walking into some, uh, cabin, ultimately asking about some person to have us led believe to believe that this guy is going to die. So, and of course he will be found later with a number of other bodies that ultimately has to be displayed at some point to find out, oh, dead, hey, you're dead, let's confirm this person's death. Yeah, this person's going to die. Yeah, let's confirm all these deaths right now. So, we ultimately have it to where Alice and ultimately there, I believe, uh, Alice and I believe Bill are the only two that are seemingly left, um, left to be alive towards the very tail end of this movie. Uh, and so, or I could be wrong about that. It could have been Ned. Uh, it's either Bill or Ned. I think it's Bill. Let's go for that. So... Ultimately, we have it to where reasonably they're starting to notice, like, how gone other people are. And so they ultimately go to the bathroom. They're trying to uh, see if there's anybody there. It seems like no one's there. They ultimately just decide that ultimately the weather is getting a little bit too dangerous. And it, they're also kind of scared because ultimately they're seemingly, like, their friends are all missing. And so we have it to where um, Alice ultimately makes the consensus of like, well, I think we need to go and call somebody. And so ultimately they end up trying uh, to uh, get a call out. Nothing really works. So eventually, as per usual, we have it to where ultimately Alice's friend ultimately ends up being killed off, as per usual, because they end up separating, which is always a stupid thing to do. So, we have it to her only. Alice is the only one really left. And so, eventually, once Alice starts to find some of her friends dead along the way, ultimately, she ends up bumping into Mrs. Voorhees. Ultimately, for her to ultimately say that's like, oh hey, I've worked with this camp with this camp before. Like, I used to be the cook, and ultimately I'm here to help you. What's what's going on? We ultimately have a tour. This girl is mentioning like, God, I've seen so many dead bodies, and ultimately we have it at one point before Alice is going to see Mrs. Voorhees, like. Considering she is the only one left alive, she what she ends up doing when she sees all of her friends displayed and all dead in, in a number of ways, she ends up going and, and closing every window possible, like putting a rope on the door and closing every window possible and, and closing the curtains of every single window with the exclusion of one. And so the one window that ultimately does not have curtains covering it, we have crashing in uh, one of Alice's friends that ultimately had gotten killed, ultimately seemingly uh, choked by rope of sorts. And so ultimately now we are with Alice going back into talking with Mrs. Voorhees, and ultimately we have it to where 
Alice is uh, taking Mrs. Voorhees to the dead girl's body. And Mrs. Voorhees is like, oh, what a beautiful shame. Like, this girl had died. And, oh, this is so horrible. Oh, how could this have happened? If only they wouldn't have been uh, into... Uh, into... Uh, uh, sex acts of sorts, and and if only they would have been watching, um, watching over things, and so on and so forth. We eventually have it to where Mrs. Voorhees ultimately finally spills that yeah, she had been account, uh, she had been a person working with this camp. And ultimately, she had been a cook for them. And ultimately, these people at this camp had called, had caused her son to drown. Because ultimately, there was a couple that had went off and been making love instead of watching Jason swim. And so ultimately, Jason had been bizarrely well swimming for the severely longest time. But maybe he had gotten a cramp. Or maybe he had gotten any number of things that I could, I guess, now have to forcibly justify. Maybe Jason Bizarrely just had gotten cramps all over his body to where he could not swim to justify him drowning, I guess. Maybe he could, maybe his body was weak. Maybe he was, maybe his body was brittle. Maybe he was swimming and broke all of his arms and legs. I don't know. Evidently, Jason couldn't figure out how to float either because when looking at it, all you could do is just kind of lay in the water and float that entire time. Justifiably, maybe also Jason maybe saw a shark and or alligator swimming by, and that's what freaked Jason out so badly. I don't know, but God, I want to just justify it now to the heavens. Maybe the shark was dragging him along, or the alligator was dragging him along, or... And so that's why Jason is so far out of the water. God, I'm trying to help this mother out just justifying this story. So <laughs> we ultimately have it to where Jason Voorhees mentions like, yeah, I, I've killed all these people at Camp Crystal Lake because they had killed my son. And ultimately we have it to where Mrs. Voorhees is like, is ultimately channeling her son in some capacity by uh, her consistently saying in some bizarre voice, kill her, mommy, kill her. And I'm like, this is the weirdest thing ever. Like, man, I w like, here's the thing. If ultimately they, like, I think the biggest problem that everyone has with this movie is always that it's not Jason. Hence why in the sequel or the remake of this, they basically tried to make it Jason because reasonably they couldn't justify having it being Mrs. Voorhees yet again. Uh, so the biggest complaint with this movie is it's not Jason, but when looking at it, there's also other movies that it wasn't Jason. Uh, so reasonably, like, give this movie a break, but then also let's complain that it isn't Jason <laughs> in this movie. We have to wait some time. Excuse me, I'm going to pause here. Sorry, I was sending a tweet. <laughs> but anyways, so I, I dropped my phone. Uh, but anyways, so we go on to here. And so Mrs. Voorhees is just evidently tired from all the people that she had, uh, one, killed and then otherwise had to move perfectly into certain spots for them to when Alice perfectly walked through certain scenarios for them to just now then fall from certain locations to scare Alice at the perfect timing. Like, man, Mrs. Voorhees just, like, had some kind of rig of sorts or some kind of bizarreish thing troll to me. Like, Alice is just having to go into all of these places where everyone is just going to pop out of these, these places and say, hey, look at me, I'm dead. Or, hey, look at me, I'm swinging from a tree somewhere, dead. Hey, look, if you're going to go into this car, there's going to be a dead body in there to otherwise make you think that you should not go into this car. So, here's the thing. 
So we have Mrs. Voorhees just filleting and murdering horrifically numerous men over and over and over. Just stab, 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 stab. And so now we have it to where Miss Voorhees is severely tired, I guess to the point to where easily and quickly Alice just has this like poker thing, this fire poker-ish like thing, and she just smacks Mrs. Voorhees and that just quickly just takes this woman down. And to ultimately Alice is just like, I'm going to try to run out of here and I'm just going to try to get into this car that has a dead body in it. I'm going to try to ultimately go into anywhere where there's dead bodies just flinging around. That ultimately is going to like just make me go, oh my God, there's more of my friends that are dead. So, because we have to show every single death in this movie, even if it doesn't mean anything, it's important. So, we ultimately have it to her reasonably. Uh, Mrs. Voorhees is ultimately going to keep coming after Alice and Alice is going to shimmy away from her. And at some point, we even have it to where Alice is going to pull a gun, uh, a, a shotgun of sorts, on Mrs. Voorhees. But I believe there was no bullets in it. And so we have this running back and forth where ultimately Alice is trying to get away from Voorhees, Mrs. Voorhees. And she's doing a really good job at it. To the point to where Alice eventually gets a machete and I guess that's ultimately what cements that Jason needs to have a machete through this entire rung of this movie but like hey you know what you know what could be a cool weapon instead of having Jason have this little like this kitchen knife that every other freaking villain has because good god how many kitchen knives have you seen in any other horror movie scream halloween uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a chainsaw because it's in the name. Uh, Freddy had kitchen fingers for knives, or, or, what? <laughs> kitchen fingers for knives? Kitchen knives for fingers! That's what I was trying to say. Anyways, so, basically everybody has that kind of same thing. Chucky, knife, psycho, knife. Everybody, what is what is with it with kitchen utensils? Is that the old like how convenient is kitchen knives for villains? Like, man, you really have to like you have to give them the easiest weapon to find, I guess. Like, hey man, how can I kill somebody? Well, I'm gonna just have to go in the kitchen so I can easily find something to kill somebody with. Hopefully you can find a kitchen knife or what are, what are you going to kill him with, a microwave? Good God. Anyways, mood point. So I just wanted to throw that last joke in there. So we ultimately have it to where Alice is swinging with this machete to chop off Mrs. Voorhees' head. And we have it to where Mrs. Voorhees is just ultimately like with her fingers going... Yeah, I'm dead now, but I'm going to keep moving my fingers because I'm rebellious. And so you ultimately have Miss Voorhees headless and now dead. Uh, and so reasonably we have it to where this girl ultimately just decides, you know what? Uh, I really just don't like this camp experience. So I'm just going to go, go. I'm just going to go on a boat and just kind of just go out into the water and just be on this boat and eventually someone's going to come for me and I'm just going to like, I'm just going to be on this boat because I just think I'm in shock right now from all the dead people that I've seen and the, and the easy attempt of me taking down uh, Mrs. Voorhees compared to everyone else in this place. I can't wait till Jason comes in here and tries to come after us because man, Mrs. Voorhees, easy. Jason, going to be a little bit more complicated. So... Speaking of which, we ultimately have Alice, who is ultimately on the water, just going, like, yeah, I'm just enjoying my boat time. I can't wait for the police to ultimately come and get me while I'm enjoying my boat time. And so, while we have this, like, la da 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 la la song going on, I'm like, yeah, I know what's going to happen after this. I know what's happening. I, I think the first time that I've seen this in a long time, 
Um, I ended up waiting for this moment and I'm like, oh my God, is Jason going to get me this time or no? And the, the, uh, the time of which that I had waited in such a long time to see it. And then ultimately we get Jason. I was like, oh my God, that got me that time. But this time I was like, eh, whatever, Jason, come on. Let me see your ugly mug. And ultimately we have Jason pop it. I was like, ah, <laughs> and then ultimately we have the girl waking up and she's like, where am I? And I thought that this was going to be like a wizard of Oz like moment. Like, oh, when you were there, and you were there, and you were there. But no. Um, every one of her friends are all dead. And ultimately, we have it to where the girl's only concern is like, well, what about the kid? What about the kid that drowned? Is he dead? Is he alive? And everybody's like, is she, is she on drugs? <laughs> is she is she lost her mind? And so... Reasonably as a straight jacket gets thrown on this girl, reasonably the movie is at its tail end to really just ultimately just say like, yeah, uh, you're, things are going to work out for you eventually somewhere down the road. Eventually you're probably going to get killed probably maybe somewhere down the road because reasonably, yeah, you're like Jason is eventually going to come after you because ultimately you're the sole survivor of the very first original film. And then you also killed his mother, so... He's probably going to come after you eventually because you just, yeah, you, you just rub Jason the wrong way. So anyways, that's all I want to say about this movie in a very comedic or funny like manner. Because really, I had to stretch this one. Uh, because reasonably, uh, I didn't know who was all who. Uh, and plus also when looking at all these images... I think the real problem with going to any number of these movies, especially when they get way too, like, it's been so many years and whatever, like, the pictures don't look like who they are anymore. And then plus two, it's just, like, the, like the original kind of movies don't quite matter. It's kind of, like, wait to the later ones so there's more details or there's more interesting things going on. So... I think at the end of the day, I can't wait to keep going through these ones. I know I'm still going to hate number three and number four, but it's like it's all to justify the means to eventually get to the point of uh, the ones that I am going to enjoy and I am going to like. Uh, and plus, I'll also finally uh, get to see Jason Goes to Hell because I'll find I'll try to find some copy of that somewhere. Um but I'm also trying to figure out if ultimately I'm going to be able to see all these or how I'm going to see them and whatever and what have you. But at the end of the day, I'm going to try to say that I've seen all of these at some point, I hope. So that's all I wanted to say about Friday the 13th, originally going to be called Camp Blood. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.